I want to thank you all so much for joining us. I want to welcome you on behalf of the University of Florida IFAS Extension Polk County. Welcome to our gardening and landscaping webinar today. We're going to be talking about landscaping with edible plants. So we're going to be combining edible and ornamental plants in the home landscape, but we're going to focus today on you know, how do we incorporate these edible plants into our traditional ornamental landscape. Today's topics, we're going to uh, briefly look at Florida friendly landscaping. We'll look at how to create an edible landscape. So some design tips and things to consider. We'll look at a few edible plants to use. Um, you know, it's not all inclusive, but just a few ideas. And then um, we'll look at how to maintain your edible landscape because there's going to be it's going to be a little bit different than maybe you would um, if you just had a normal ornamental garden. So Florida friendly landscaping um, is comprised of nine easy to follow principles. And um, by utilizing these principles, we can maintain beautiful landscapes that help um, protect our natural resources, particularly our water resources here in Florida. Um, and so the foundation is right plant, right place. When we utilize um, plants that are suitable for our site, they're able to thrive. They're gonna be less susceptible to pest and disease problems. And this certainly is going to apply when we're talking about edible landscaping, making sure these edible plants um, are right for our landscape um, so that they're able to thrive and we won't have as many pest problems potentially. Certainly you wanna water efficiently and we'll talk about grouping plants by water needs, um, types of irrigation to use as well. You certainly wanna fertilize appropriately. This is also going to be something to consider when you're including edible plants in your landscape as those um, fertilizer needs may vary. And so you'll want to just be um, conscious of that and how you fertilize your plants. Using mulch is definitely Florida friendly. We would recommend a two to three inch layer of an organic or um, tree based tree based mulch like pine bark, pine straw, uh, melaleuca, eucalyptus, fallen leaves, things like that. Certainly attracting wildlife is Florida friendly and by including edible plants in your landscape, um, you may find more wildlife uh, visiting your, your landscape. So be sure to um, just provide enough food um, or have some patience that you might be sharing some of your edible plants with some wildlife visitors as well. We wanna manage yard pests responsibly. Definitely um, this is important when we're incorporating edible plants in the landscape. You know, We definitely wanna be out there um, monitoring, scouting, um, correctly identifying, knowing who um, the beneficial or predatory insects are that might be helping us um, so we don't have to do as much work. Recycling yard waste is also part of Florida Friendly. So, um, you know, creating a compost pile, creating self-mulching areas, those are all ways that you can recycle yard waste. Reducing stormwater runoff, so creating um, more places in our landscape for water to penetrate and not run off our site. Um, you know, directing downspouts into our landscape or lawn areas, things like that. And of course, protecting the waterfront. Um, you know, Florida Friendly Landscaping would encourage you if you live on a body of water to maintain a, a 10 foot maintenance free zone um, where you don't mow, you don't spray um, herbicides that aren't rated for use near water um, and you don't fertilize as well. So you're, you're keeping, um, excess nutrients out of that body of water. So those are the nine principles of Florida friendly landscaping. Pretty easy. I like to um, call them practices so we can we can all practice something. And so by you know slowly incorporating these into your landscape, you'll definitely be more Florida friendly. So now we'll talk about creating an edible landscape. So we're starting off, you know, most of us have a traditional landscape that has ornamental plants, a lawn, things like that. And so now we're going to talk about how to incorporate these edibles into that area. So the same um, design principles are going to apply. We certainly want to utilize things that um, are attractive, that um, you know appeal. You certainly wouldn't want to use um, plants that we can't stand to look at. Um, that wouldn't be something to include in the landscape. You know, if you already have a theme, definitely incorporate that. You know, if you have um, a specific color palette or um, you know certain um, texture plants, you can definitely do that with your edible plants as well. Um, so we wanna stick to, you know, um, 
designing this so that we have um, still um, neat landscape beds and pathways and things like that. You also want to think about how your landscape is going to look throughout the year. When we're talking about incorporating edible plants, some of them may be perennials, but some of them may be annuals that we'll look at. And so you want to make sure that you're combining evergreen type plants with your um, edibles if they're annuals so that you'll still have something in the ground year round. And then definitely choose things um, that have maybe fruit that you would enjoy or even some uh, we'll look at some edible plants that have really beautiful leaves and foliage that would add to the overall look of your landscape and, and be dual purpose. So one, they're edible, but two, they really are beautiful plants that have an ornamental aspect. So of course, just like with Florida Friendly Landscaping, we want to follow right plant, right place. So we want to pick, so we want to know our location, you know, how much sun does your landscape receive? Certainly different parts of your landscape are going to receive different um, amounts of sunlight potentially. And so you want to match these plants just like you would any other plant to those sites. Um, you know, another thing to consider is take advantage of what you already have. Um, include some kind of um, hardscapes or decorations as well to enhance your edible landscape. Um, certain, maybe some of the annuals you can just keep in containers in your ornamental landscape bed. You know, maybe you can add um, pathways that go along your edible and an ornamental bed. And of course, um, plant what you eat, you will want to eat, but don't be afraid to try something you may not um, normally want to eat. Um, after you grow it, you might be more encouraged to eat it. And um, certainly I would encourage that for maybe um, less expensive um, annual edible plants or seasonable edible plants. Um, it, you know, you could just buy a seed packet and not have invested a lot. And if you end up not liking them, that's okay. But maybe they were a beautiful plant all along anyway. <clears throat> certainly, um, with Florida Friendly, you wanna make sure that um, when you're including these edible plants, incorporating, you know, incorporating them with your more um, low maintenance ornamental plants. So you have to think about, you're incorporating two different kinds of plants potentially. And so the maintenance of those, it could vary. So you don't wanna to have to, you don't wanna have an edible garden or incorporate edible plants in front of a plant that you have to maybe prune more often or needs more attention for some reason. If you're having to constantly get into that area and these plants are blocking that, either create a pathway or choose something um, that you don't mind stepping around or stepping over or that doesn't create you know, a burden to um, maintain your garden. Another really important factor for um, edible landscaping is grouping plants according to water needs. So you've already got your ornamental plants. Hopefully you've grouped those according to water needs. You know, your plants that are more drought tolerant are together. Your plants that need that supplemental irrigation are in a bed together and are receiving that irrigation. So now when you incorporate those edible plants, you know, your annual edibles that are gonna need that irrigation, they can go with the plants that already receive irrigation. Maybe you're gonna add some edibles that are more drought tolerant. So you wanna group those away because if you end up combining those, one of those plants is gonna suffer. One is either gonna to get too much water or too little water. And you'll find that those plants won't thrive. Um, they'll be more susceptible to pests and they're just not gonna perform well. And that could certainly be discouraging, but those plants also won't look very nice. And so then your, your landscape will start to um, not be as appealing to you as it was before. So it's really important to incorporate um, and consider both the maintenance needs and the water needs of these plants. Some other things to consider are incorporating edible plants into a, a butterfly garden or even um, a perennial landscape, maybe as a border. Um, some things to consider would be to, you know, be cautious of the types of chemicals or pesticides that you use in that area. Um, certainly when we've got a variety of plants, certainly plants that attract beneficial insects, we may not need to use as many products. And so one thing that you might consider some edible plants for your butterfly garden, um, dill, parsley, and fennel all are herbs, and they also work um, and serve as uh, host plants for um, a particular butterfly. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, that's a great way to incorporate edible plants 
but also provide for wildlife and your butterfly garden. Here's a picture um, that I took a few years ago in my own butterfly garden. I was growing dill and sure enough, um, the caterpillar for the Eastern black swallowtail was hosting on my dill. So, um, you know, consider um, not just, you know, wildlife like um, rabbits and squirrels, but even um, pollinators and their caterpillars that might utilize your edible plants. And so either plant enough that you can both share or have some tolerance um, that they're certainly looking out for these plants as well. So definitely a beautiful plant, but um, dual purpose in your garden. We've kind of talked th about this, but, um, you know, adding structures like containers, but um, trellises and arbors are also really beautiful um, structures. And then they can also support some of your vining edibles. You know, if you're going to grow cucumbers or grapes or um, peas that grow tall, anything like that is going to need some type of structure. And so you can really enhance your landscape by creating some really beautiful structures for these vining edible plants to grow on. Again, containers can really enhance your garden. Now I wouldn't encourage you to make an entire landscape of containers, but containers can really pop. They can be great for some of your seasonable, or excuse me, seasonable, seasonal herbs or seasonable um, vegetables as well. And so that makes it easy to kind of swap those out um, but they can be placed in your ornamental landscape bed. You might also consider um, incorporating some type of border to help maintain your plants if you're growing any um, low growing herbs um, that might spill over that, um, that kind of edging just might help keep everything in place and help you um, to know when to trim things back and, and just keep things kind of orderly and neat when incorporating edibles into this ornamental landscape. Don't forget to utilize pathways. Um, pathways are definitely an element of design, but they can also, um, you know, make your garden look more neat, more presentable, um, give you access as well. You know, we talked earlier about, you know, if you're incorporating plants, but you've got, you need access to a particular plant for some type of maintenance or, or whatever, you know, you utilize that plant for, make sure you have access to it. Uh, you know, a traditional vegetable garden bed, we would recommend to be only four feet wide so that you would have access um, to either side to harvest your vegetables, but when incorporating these plants into your, your already existing landscape, you know, that these landscape beds might not fit that four by eight or four by four bed. And so creating pathways to make things accessible, but also beautiful um, will definitely enhance the landscape. Again, um, same principles apply, you know, definitely do some research on um, different edible plants, not just um, seasonable edibles, but um, perennial edibles, and look at, you know, the leaf type, the flower color, things like that, and, you know, you can incorporate those um, as far as color, texture, form, and even size into your traditional landscape bed, and they'll blend um, right in. I would definitely encourage you if you have not started um, incorporating edible plants into your your traditional landscape, start small, you know, uh, maybe try a pot with some herbs or um, some seasonal vegetables um, as a way to start and put it in your landscape bed and see how it looks. Maybe try, you know, one type of lettuce this winter as a border or something and just see how that works for you. You know, did you like um, the plant, how did it perform, you know, what could you have done differently before you just, uh, and we would encourage that for any type of landscape endeavor, you know, start small, see what works, and then of course add on to it. You also might find that, you know, um, having one basil plant or one mint plant was plenty. That was all that you really needed. You, you didn't even harvest much from it. So maybe you don't need 10, um, basil plants, you know, throughout the landscape. You know, there's some really cool techniques as well to incorporate. 
Um, and so just consider different unique ways um, that you can enhance your garden, but also make these edible plants work for you. You know, and we've talked about make sure that you choose stuff that you'll you'll want to eat potentially, but don't be scared to try something new. But also you want to make sure you choose plants that are going to grow well where you live. Um, here in Polk County, we're in Central Florida, so we certainly want to choose plants that are going to thrive here in Central Florida or wherever you are. Make sure these plants will thrive. Um, there's nothing more discouraging than getting a plant that doesn't um, is not suitable for your climate and doesn't do well. It can be very discouraging. So we have some great vegetable gardening guides um, and resources on herbs and fruiting um, trees that will help you pick varieties and cultivars that are going to um, thrive in your area. One other thing um, to consider with these edible plants is oftentimes maybe we eat the, um, you know, for some of the plants, we eat the leaves um, of the plant, but many of these plants may go to flower. Um, consider your broccoli, um, you know, or your lettuce, and uh, even some of your herbs may go to flower. And so those flowers are going to benefit the pollinators. So maybe after you've harvested a few um, times throughout the, the growing season, don't be afraid to let those plants go to flower. Um, additionally, those flowers will produce seeds and you could collect those seeds and then have um, a start for next year as well. So in addition to the plants um, just being edible, many of the flowers of these edible plants can be beneficial for pollinators. And I know we've said it um, a few times now, but right plant, right place is going to make the difference. You know, um, many edible plants um, do need full sun, not all, but many. And so um, you definitely want to be aware of that. If you don't have um, a landscape with sun, you will have to be very careful in what you pick so that these plants will thrive um, in your landscape and still look beautiful as well. We've talked a little bit about irrigation. We've talked about grouping plants according to water needs, but think about how you're gonna water them. Um, many of our uh, seasonal vegetables are gonna need um, regular irrigation. And so micro irrigation is a really great option if you haven't um, considered that for your landscape. It's also really good for your landscape beds. And so micro irrigation is low volume irrigation, um, stays low to the ground, puts out a lower volume um, so you're not wasting a lot of water and you can also focus um, the irrigation on your plants. So you're going to reduce weeds as well because you're not watering the entire landscape bed. You can focus the water where the plants are. So one, water staying low to the ground. You can also keep water off the leaves of your plants. Um, many ornamental and edible plants, um, you know, can develop problems by getting too much water on the leaves. And so to um, help your plants thrive, micro-irrigation would also be a great option. Okay, so now we'll look at a few edible plants to consider for your landscape. Um, again, this is not all inclusive. There's tons of edible plants to incorporate, but um, just a few to consider. Um, one that's pretty well known is um, bananas. And so bananas can um, thrive here in Florida, certainly um, very well in South Florida and even in Central Florida, um, bananas can do well. Certainly um, if we have a freeze, they may be damaged to the ground, but often bananas will grow back. So just um, consider that, um, especially if you're in Central or North Florida, you could um, certainly have cool enough temperatures in the winter that could damage your plants. Um, so just consider that when you're incorporating them in the landscape that, you know, if over the winter these plants are damaged to the ground, what is that landscape going to look like? But there's lots of um, cultivars that can be grown throughout Florida. Um, dwarf Cavendish is uh, well known throughout Florida and, and used. Um, it can produce tasty fruit as well if it doesn't freeze back. There is a very cold hardy um, banana and um, it's a, a Japanese banana, um, but it's not um, known for its edible. It's more of an ornamental um, banana, but still banana plants definitely give that tropical look. So again, if you're keeping with theme of your landscape, um, 
you know, this is a type of um, or closely related, related edible plant to include. Um, now, banana plants are going to perform best when they're in moist and very fertile soil. They also prefer um, or do better when they're protected from wind um, and receive full sun. So kind of consider that if that would meet the, the right plant, right place for your landscape. Um, so, but considering here in Florida, most of our soils are sandy and don't have a lot of fertility, you may need to fertilize your bananas quite frequently, um, up to four to six times per year. So just consider that and where you're going to incorporate them. Certainly these would not do well in a bed of plants that are drought tolerant or plants that um, are more native that don't thrive in those types of conditions. So again, right plant, right place and just deciding you know, if this is something that you would enjoy growing. Beautyberry is a Florida native plant. Um, the berries are edible. Now they're not very tasty. So some of you are probably saying, but that's really not flavorful, um, but it is gorgeous. And, um, you know, beautyberry fruit can be made into a jelly. Um, certainly birds love it. So you're providing for wildlife as well. And every fall, those, um, those berries show up and they're absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is a deciduous plant. So that's something else to consider, um, particularly with, um, you know, thinking about edible plants and whether they're, um, you know, evergreen, if they're just, you know, seasonal, kind of like annuals, or if they're deciduous. And so um, these are going to lose their leaves this winter, but not a problem. They'll, they'll spread. Um, leaf back out in the spring and then they'll they'll flower in the summer beautiful flowers and then again those beautiful berries in the winter so you know if you have space beautyberry can get fairly large um, you know maybe five or six feet in height and just as wide as well in certain locations so um, if you have the room for that great also this is a great plant maybe if you don't have as much sun in your landscape and you have a more shady landscape Beautyberry will thrive in shadier conditions as well. Chickasaw plum um, is an edible plant. Again, the fruit's not as tasty as some of the more traditional um, fruiting trees, but this is another Florida native um, plant. It's a small tree. It is deciduous, um, so it does have fruit that, of course, could probably be turned into a, a jam or a jelly. But another um, aspect of growing Chickasaw plum is that in late winter, um, you'll get these beautiful flowers. Um, so it's deciduous and loses its leaves, but then it has um, really um, beautiful winter flowers. So again, thinking about seasonal interest, you know, if you are um, only here in the winter in Florida, this might be a great plant for you that you'll get beautiful flowers in the winter. Fennel is another great, um, edible plant to incorporate into your ornamental landscape. Um, like I mentioned earlier, some of these herbs like fennel and parsley and dill um, are also hosts for the black swallowtail um, caterpillar. And so the butterfly will lay eggs on this. So you'll be hosting those. So remember caterpillars do munch down on their host plants. Um, but again, plant plenty so that you have enough. Um, and really, when you think about this bronze fennel and that beautiful color in the landscape and even that texture. So, I mean, think about color and texture when incorporating um, just like an ornamental plant, but with these edible plants as well. Um, fennel grows best in the cooler weather um, and it's gonna require sun and um, a little bit of supplemental irrigation. So. Um, just keep that in mind. And it's going to take about three months before you can harvest fennel if you are growing it for yourself as an edible plant. Nasturtium is um, a fairly popular um, seasonal uh, flower, but the leaves and the flowers are edible on nasturtium. Now, um, they're not sweet at all. Um, the flowers definitely have kind of a, a peppery taste, but um, a beautiful garnish, you know, I think sometimes we forget about using edible flowers in our, um, you know, in our, our cooking or um, salads and even in our landscape, but nasturtium is a really great um, flowering plant to grow. In Central Florida, you can grow it in the spring and the fall. Um, now there's kind of um, shorter uh, cultivars that are going to stay maybe only um, get about 12 inches tall and then there's trailing 
um, varieties as well. And so those will do best um, maybe in a container cascading down, um, but beautiful plants, um, definitely uh, great for pollinators and great for you as an edible plant as well. And beautiful color um, with the flowers that can be red and orange and yellow. Rosemary, um, I definitely think is, is underutilized in the Florida landscape. Um, and so I think it makes a great, um, just kind of think of it as a very small shrub in the landscape. Um, now rosemary is gonna do better. Um, it prefers drier conditions. So you wanna be careful when you're, where you incorporate it. Um, but really a beautiful plant it does. And rosemary does have pretty little flowers as well when it flowers kind of a, a pale, um, lilac to almost kind of pinkish color or white, um, but a really great plant to grow, kind of woody. And so, um, you know, you could substitute it for a small shrub in the landscape or um, even use it as maybe a, um, a focus or a focal point in the landscape as well. Tarragon is, um, now specifically Mexican tarragon is gonna do well as a perennial herb here in Florida. Now French tarragon, which most people are known, uh, know about is, is more difficult to grow in warmer climates, which would include Florida. So, but Me excuse me, Mexican tarragon is gonna do well. Um, and it tolerates our heat and our humidity. So um, it gets about two to three feet tall. So it's kind of a, a semi woody herb um, and you can see definitely beautiful flowers as well when it goes to flowers. So another edible plant that would serve with ornamental purpose. Of course, um, chives and onions and society garlic are all um, great plants to incorporate in the landscape. If you love the smell of those plants, um, having them in your, uh, your ornamental landscape, um, and if you brush by them or, or touch them, you'll get that fragrance from them. Um, now remember, uh, chives and onions are going to be cool season uh, plants here in Florida. Society garlic is a plant that you can grow year round in Florida and has those beautiful um, purple flowers year round as well. Um, but just something else to consider. So you'd have kind of a spiky um, plant to include, at least spiky looking. They're not spiky to touch, but um, kind of grass like looking plant. Peach trees do grow here in Florida. Um, of course, we have to get uh, cultivars that are suitable for Florida. And I'll send more information um, out about how to choose um, a peach tree if you're interested. Now, because um, the hard part, you know, we're very warm here in Florida. And so peaches are a type of tree that need um, chill hours. And so you want to make sure that you get a peach tree that um, meets, you know, matches how many chill hours on average your location here in Florida receives. But a beautiful plant that um, will produce fruit for you in the spring. Um, it is deciduous, so it loses its leaves, but um, then you get the beautiful flowers. Um, if you aren't familiar, peach flowers are also very um, attractive. And so you'll get those while the tree is dormant in the winter. Um, and then of course you'll get the fruit. Swiss chard is absolutely beautiful to incorporate into your landscape. So. Um, I didn't try Swiss chard until I actually grew it myself. So there you go. You might even try something you aren't used to or you don't think you like, um, but Swiss chard can be really beautiful. And so in the winter here in Florida, it would incorporate well into your ornamental landscape and really add um, some nice color, especially if you're gonna do kind of layering in a landscape bed or even in a pot, you know, maybe just try a little bit in a container in the landscape bed and add a little bit of color through the foliage. Um, <clears throat> strawberries can also be grown. Um, these are a winter, I guess, fruit, if you will, here in Florida. Now in central Florida, you want to plant them um, in late September through October. Um, in south Florida, they can be planted in um, October until the 1st of December. And in North Florida, again, very similar to Central Florida, maybe mid-September through mid-October. So here in Central Florida, we've we've passed the planting time. You could still try to get some in, although um, we found recently it's been very hard to find strawberries, um, at least the cultivars that are going to do well here in Florida. So just keep that in mind. You may start seeing some at um, some of the big box stores, but those um, 
cultivars may not do as well. And so the ones that are going to do well here are Sweet Charlie, um, Chandler, Selva, Festival, or just a few. Um, and we'll include some more information on growing strawberries in the landscape. But definitely they would do well in a landscape bed or a, a hanging basket as well um, and really add to your landscape. And of course, a great edible plant. Blueberries are another plant you could incorporate. Um, and so this is gonna be kind of take the place of um, a woody shrub in the landscape. And so you'll get um, blueberries in you know late spring here in Florida, but otherwise you'll have this kind of um, evergreen shrub in the landscape. Lemongrass is another edible plant to incorporate you may not have thought of. And so of course, ornamental grasses are really beautiful in the landscape. And so lemongrass could also take um, the place of an ornamental grass in your landscape. And then you could utilize those leaves and brew um, tea or use the base of the leaves um, in different dishes. And so that's another great um, edible plant, but definitely beautiful in your, your landscape as well. Dwarf mulberry tree, um, you know, is another plant, a fruiting plant that people might not consider. Um, mulberry is in the same family as figs and jackfruit and breadfruit as well. Um, they do produce these small little fruits that are sweet. They kind of look like a, a narrow blackberry. Um, of course, wildlife do love mulberries as well. So you might have um, more wildlife visiting your landscape if you incorporate one of these trees. Um, and they do well in uh, many Florida landscapes um, that they thrive in our sandy soils. They're very drought tolerant once established. Um, one thing though, if you're incorporating it in your ornamental landscape, you might want to avoid putting it near any driveways or sidewalks um, because the fruit, particularly the darker fruit could stain those surfaces. And so um, that's another thing to consider when you're growing edible plants, um, particularly ones that produce fruit if that fruit is not um, managed, it could fall and um, either stain something below it or be a slip hazard um, or attract unwanted wildlife as well. Now, <clears throat> I have the common name cranberry hibiscus here, um, but the, one, the plant pictured here is um, a particular hibiscus species, um, also known as false roselle. Now there is um, Florida cranberry, another hibiscus plant. Now that is the one that has the green leaves and then the um, people make tea out of the flower. But this one, um, the leaves are actually edible on this cranberry hibiscus with these burgundy leaves. So you wanna be very careful and know the, um, the species that you're selecting and I'll be sure to include that um, information for you. But um, a really beautiful plant, it's flowering right now. And um, again, the leaves are edible and they have this kind of tart berry flavor um, with the leaves. Mint is another um, herb that would incorporate well, um, certainly in a container or even in the ground. Now, one thing with mint is that it is spreading. So keep that in mind if you're gonna put it in the ground. Um, now it does best in moist soils and it prefers light or part shade here in Florida. Um, it can become, um, you know, it, it can suffer in full sun if it doesn't receive enough water. So just keep that in mind. But if you have, you know, maybe um, part shade in your landscape, mint would be an excellent plant. Um, certainly could look great in a container or even in the ground as a ground cover. Grapes also do well here in Florida. Of course, there's certain um, varieties and cultivars. Um, but if you're looking for a plant to put on a trellis or an arbor, um, grapes would be a great plant now. Um, they're often deciduous, so they're gonna lose their leaves in the winter. So keep that in mind um, that you'll have this woody vine on whatever it's growing on in the winter without leaves. So when you're incorporating that into your design, just make sure that that won't be unsightly wherever you end up keeping it. Um, now that we're entering the cool season of Florida, you can start growing um, lettuce, of course, um, if our temperatures creep up, lettuce can bolt and go to flower. But again, um, if it's in your edible or your ornamental landscape bed, just know that those flowers um, will benefit pollinators. So that's something um, to not be too stressed about. But 
lettuce, um, different lettuces come in um, different colors and can really be beautiful. You know, if you haven't grown lettuce before, maybe try it in a container this year, just see how it does. Um, and then next year, maybe consider adding it to a landscape bed. Uh, this is one of my favorite plants and I definitely think it's underutilized. And so the common name is pineapple guava, but it, it has nothing to do with pineapple or guava. Um, it's a great plant for both its ornamental characteristics and its edible characteristics. And so this is kind of a large shrub slash small tree. Um, it can get up to 15 feet tall and just as wide, but it is an evergreen plant. And it has these beautiful um, leaves that have this silvery color underneath. So very beautiful in the landscape. But then it also produces that flower that you can see on the right. And so the petals are actually edible and they actually have this little sweet flavor. They're not very strong, but it's just this very um, slight sweet flavor. And so again, an edible flower. Now you wanna be careful because it also produces a fruit. So if you're gonna eat the flowers, you only wanna pick the petals off so that you leave the other parts of the flower so that the fruit can produce. Um, and our tree at the extension office finally produced a fruit that I was able to find. Um, I don't know if wildlife has been taking all of our fruit, but I finally got to try the fruit this year. And it was the, the most unique little sweet fruit I'd ever had. So I would definitely encourage you if you have room for, you know, a 15, up to 15 foot tall and wide, um, large shrub slash small tree, however you wanna characterize that in your landscape, um, definitely a great edible, edible tree to include with both the flowers and the fruit. Turmeric is also another plant that you can grow. You can see there on the left are the beautiful leaves that this plant produces. Um, it also has a really beautiful flower spike as well that stays close to the ground. Um, and of course, you're familiar with the, um, the ground part, um, the rhizome that you use in cooking or um, as a spice but um, a really beautiful plant in the landscape here in Florida. And so it will, um, it is deciduous. So it'll, the leaves are starting to die back now. We've trimmed all of ours at the extension office, um, but it'll spring back up um, in the spring. And it's gonna do well in partial to full shade. So again, if you don't have full sun and you can't grow a lot of the other plants, this is another edible plant that you can grow um, and is really beautiful as well. So now we'll just look at a few examples of incorporating edible plants in the landscape. So you can see here this beautiful landscape bed. Um, it's got some great flowering plants, but it's also got Swiss chard, uh, maybe some kale there as well, uh, and a few herbs. Um, really beautiful, great, um, you know, lots of color and uh, very full looking plants as well. Here's a landscape bed um, that has a fruiting tree in the middle with some ornamental shrubs as well. Um, again, here is that rosemary, which I think is definitely underutilized and really looks good as a small shrub. Um, so like I said, you could plant it in mass and create a border, kind of a privacy, a short privacy, um, but you could also use it as a specimen or a focal plant as well. Here's some beautiful designs. Um, here's a traditional ornamental hedge that um, is surrounded by um, what looks like cabbage in the middle. So I love the contrast of both the color and the textures of that, um, that landscape. Um, now that may not be um, suitable for you in that scale, but certainly you could create a container garden that incorporated um, maybe cabbage or cauliflower in the middle. And then you had a beautiful um, chartreuse green um, cascading plant on the side. And then there on the right, you can see lots of ornamental and uh, what looks like um, maybe a purple basil there on the right. The, so now we'll talk about maintaining your edible landscape. So remember that your edible plants might require more than some of your ornamental plants, just depends on what you already have. So you wanna group those plants by water needs. And we've talked about that before. So your plants that are more drought tolerant, keep those in an area where they're not receiving as much um, supplemental irrigation or no supplemental irrigation at all. And then your plants that require um, more consistent supplemental irrigation together in a landscape bed. And we talked about how micro irrigation um, is a really great option 
um, particularly for your, your edible plants, but also from a Florida friendly perspective in that you're, you're saving water as well, um, but it's also healthier for your plants as well. The other thing you wanna consider is pest management in your edible and ornamental landscape. And so um, you wanna be careful about what you use. So now if you are gonna apply any pesticides, you wanna make sure that they are rated for use on your edible plants. Another thing you might not have considered, if you have um, a landscape company that comes out to maintain your landscape, you might wanna talk to them about how you've incorporated edible plants or um, where you have them. So one, they don't think their weeds popping up, but two, how you know any products that they use will not affect those plants as well or that would be safe to use around those plants. Um, another aspect of maintaining your edible garden is pruning. And so again, pruning may just involve, um, you know, cutting off fruit as it, as it produces. Um, it may involve for your woody plants, pruning those like your peach trees and your blueberries at the right time of year, kind of um, uh, shaping them or pruning them um, also with your, your fruiting trees, maybe maintaining size so that you can reach the fruit as well. We've talked about with some of these, um, particularly the, the seasonable edibles or annuals, when they go to flower, just leaving those flower. Now, certainly you can prune the flowers if you, um, for some of the herbs, if you don't want them going to flower and you kind of want to keep them um, producing because often when they flower and seed with those annual plants, um, it's kind of a a signal end of life, the plant is kind of um, starting to shut down. So maybe um, pruning in the beginning um, as those flowers form, but then at the end, just letting those flowers stay on and providing for pollinators. And of course, with harvesting, um, you know, you're growing plants. If you're growing plants um, to eat and plants that produce a fruit, um, you certainly want to stay on top of that. Um, you want to try to get to the fruit um, as it ripens, um, try to beat some of your wildlife friends to get into that as well, um, or at least providing enough for them to share. Um, you don't wanna allow the fruit to fall necessarily on the ground um, and create some type of um, you know, waste or situation where you're attracting more wildlife. Um, so keeping harvested um, will definitely keep your landscape um, neat and clean as well. Now, <clears throat> With your edible landscape, again, you're going to have um, edible plant parts or fruit producing at different times of the year. So, you know, changing those out as the seasons change um, with, you know, what's appropriate for the season um, and, you know, incorporating your evergreen ornamental plants as well so that you don't have bare spots in your landscape beds is also beneficial. Um, and so, that's going to keep the landscape clean, but also attractive. And then, um, you know, you just want to think about when you're incorporating these, these um, seasonal or annual edible plants, um, that you have to change them out. So you want to make sure that it's not too much disturbance to the, the plants that are staying in there year round. Um, so keep enough space, but also make sure, um, you know, it's, it's not too much walking or uh, distress for those other plants as well. Here's a few resources um, that I would definitely encourage you to check out. So today we looked at what Florida Friendly Landscaping is. We looked at you know, some design tips and things to consider when creating an edible landscape with your traditional ornamental landscape. We looked at a few edible plants that you can use. And then we also talked about some of the maintenance that you might consider for your, your landscape. I want to thank you all so much for joining us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at UFIFAS Extension Polk County. You can call us, email us, or even visit our website and um, also follow us on social media.